Welcome back to another episode of the Clark County Weekly News Podcast, your source for the top news stories in Clark County, Washington. We've got a packed episode for you this week. From wildfires to political endorsements, we've got it all covered. So, let's dive right in. Our first story takes us to the heart of La Center, where the Jenny Creek Fire has been making headlines. Good news folks, the fire's size has been reduced to 32 acres, with firefighting agencies reporting a 60% containment rate. Level 3 evacuation orders were lifted, and residents are now returning home, although they're advised to remain prepared for any changes in conditions. For the latest evacuation zones and updates, remember to visit the Clark County GAS map provided by Clark Regional Emergency Services. And speaking of fire safety, keep an eye on ongoing updates at creesa911.org. As temperatures soared across western Washington, it was crucial to stay informed about the heat wave. The National Weather Service had issued an excessive heat warning, with temperatures in triple digits in some areas. People were advised to stay indoors, hydrate, and keep an eye on vulnerable neighbors. Cooling centers were set up across the state, and it was important to remember to follow water safety guidelines when enjoying outdoor activities. The political scene in Clark County has been buzzing this week with the Washington State Republican Party giving an early endorsement to Joe Kent for the 3rd Congressional District campaign. This move, along with other recent developments, indicates a shift towards a more conservative stance within the party. Joe Kent's bid against incumbent Democrat Marie Glusenkamp Perez is gaining traction, and this early endorsement could provide him with a significant advantage in the 2024 general election. In more political news, State Representative Jim Walsh has taken the helm as the new chairman of the Washington State Republican Party. With a decisive 95-15 vote during the party's summer state committee meeting, Walsh is determined to lead the party's efforts in the face of Democratic dominance. His plans include proactive media campaigns and support for Republican candidates based on policies, aiming to reshape the party's future direction. Moving on, Congresswoman Marie Glusenkamp Perez is pushing for a high-speed rail project, but some residents have raised concerns about priorities. As the proposed Cascadia high-speed rail project aims to connect Vancouver, BC, to Portland, southwest Washington residents are facing tolls to fund the Interstate Bridge Replacement Project. The community is questioning the funding allocation, given the ongoing traffic congestion and other pressing needs. Our hearts go out to the battleground community as they mourn the passing of Battleground Police Department Sergeant Richard Kelly. He tragically passed away due to a medical emergency while on duty. The Vancouver Police Department is conducting a death investigation, and the community is urged to support Sergeant Kelly's family and the entire Battleground Police Department during this difficult time. In honor of fallen law enforcement officers, the annual golf tournament in Camas has been renamed the Jeremy Brown and Don Sahota Memorial Golf Tournament. The event, organized by the Vancouver Police Officers Guild and the Clark County Deputy Sheriff Guild, not only pays tribute to these officers but also raises funds for local charities. It's heartwarming to see the community come together to remember their sacrifices and support worthy causes. Lawmakers from Clark County are making a plea to Governor Jay Inslee to reconsider the closure of the Larch Correctional Center. The closure, scheduled for October 2023, has raised concerns about job loss, recidivism, and the future of rehabilitation efforts. The lawmakers argue that the center's unique programs, such as mental health services and addiction treatment, are irreplaceable in larger prisons. They also underscore the facility's partnership with the Department of Natural Resources, which plays a crucial role in wildfire prevention and community safety. The lawmakers emphasized that closing LCC could have a negative impact on safety, family ties, and efforts to reduce recidivism, calling for a closer look at the decision. Now, let's shift our focus to a heartwarming story that takes us to the heart of Clark County's youth community. The Clark County Youth Football Food Drive, a long-standing tradition aimed at supporting families in need, has received a fresh burst of energy under new leadership. For dedicated moms from the Evergreen Plainsman Foundation, Samantha Rupp, Brittany Allen, Christina Chapel, and Angie Wadby have taken charge to restore the event's original spirit. Their commitment to reintroducing prizes, raffles, and community involvement is reigniting excitement among young athletes about making a difference. And that's not all, local businesses have rallied behind them, uniting the community in this common cause. Our last story delves into education where a heated debate is unfolding. 
Liv Finn, the director of the Center for Education at the Washington Policy Center, has taken aim at Superintendent Rakedahl's recent claim that students gained a lot from the COVID-19 school shutdowns. But hold on a moment, because there's a twist. Finn highlights the apparent contradiction in acknowledging academic setbacks while also praising the benefits of the shutdowns. State test scores are showing concerning proficiency gaps that have far-reaching consequences. What do you, our listeners, think about this? We've got a poll on our website right now, head over to clarkcountytoday.com and cast your vote. Did COVID school shutdowns affect student learning? It's a topic that's been on everyone's minds, and we want to hear your opinion. And if you're feeling particularly passionate about this issue, don't forget to send a letter to the editor at ken.v at clarkcountytoday.com. That's a wrap on this week's episode of the Clark County Weekly News Podcast. Remember, for more in-depth coverage of these stories and other local news, visit clarkcountytoday.com. Stay informed, stay engaged, and we'll see you next week.